Go to the question for the carboxylic acids and derivatives playlist. So this is number three now. If you wanted to check out the other videos, I'll put the link to the playlist at the top of the screen now. I hope you like the video, hope you find it helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would absolutely love you to do so. But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So part A is testing our knowledge of the reaction between the carboxylic acid group and alkalis, metals, and carbonates. So there's the first one. You can see what's happened. The H plus ion of the acid has been replaced by the potassium ion. So we get the salt and water there. There's the second one. So just be careful. Magnesium forms a two plus ion whereas this methanoate ion here is just one minus. So we need two of those for the magnesium and we also make hydrogen in this reaction, not water. And there's the third one. So you'll see we've got two carboxyl groups, one in the R group and one as part of the amino acid functional group. So they're both gonna react with sodium carbonate and form the sodium salt and we also get water and CO2 for that one. Moving on to part B, so I'll start at the side here and react the nitrile group with something to form the carboxylic acid group, and that something is aqueous acid. So I'm just gonna put H plus AQ there. Or you could put H plus and H2O, or you could put HCl and H2O, something like that. Next one we'll look at is this reaction here. So we've got carboxylic acid, so it's benzoic acid that, and sulfuric acid with heat. So that's gonna be an esterification reaction. So we're gonna get an ester forming with this alcohol group here. So there's the structure for that one. And then moving on to this reaction here. So we're reacting this alcohol. So this is propane 2 all Again, sulfuric acid and reflux. So we're gonna get another a sterification reaction, but this time the ester group is going to form with the carboxylic acid group there. So there's the structure for that one. And then finally, something in here reacts with NABH4 and it generates the 2-hydroxybutanoic acid. So the thing we've got to appreciate here is that this NABH4 is a reducing agent. And what it does, it'll reduce a carbonyl compound to an alcohol so there's your alcohol group there. So we need to think, what kind of alcohol is that? It's a secondary alcohol group because the carbon with the OH on is bonded directly to two others. So what will have been reduced will have been a ketone. Moving on to part C, which deals with polymers. So just be careful when you draw this structure that you put the double bond in the right place. So the main functional group in a carboxylic acid is the COH group. So that's carbon one, which means that the double bond starts here at carbon three. Next thing I'm gonna do is draw two repeat units of the addition polymer that would form from that. So my little tip for this is make your monomer look like an ethene molecule. So what do I mean by that? Just have the two carbons of the double bond and then the four other bonds coming off like that and it makes it much easier to draw the polymer chain. So shown two repeat units, it's gonna look like that. So you can see there's one repeat unit there. You can see how it relates to that. And there's your second one. And don't forget about these continuation bonds. So they can either be dotted lines like I've done, or it could just be a solid line there and there. And then for the next one, it's a condensation polymer. So I've just drawn up the two monomers there. So this is your butane dicarboxylic acid and this is your 1,4-dihydroxy-2-methylbenzene. So all we need to do is lasso out an OH group from the carboxyl group and an H from the OH group. Obviously, they're going to generate H2O, which means the one repeat unit of this condensation polymer looks like that. And just in case anyone's done it the other way, and it's totally fine to do it this way, where you take the H off the carboxyl group and the OH of the um, alcohol group, the repeat's gonna look like that. And then moving on to the next part, we've got these three repeat units of this condensation polymer. So the red dotted lines are just showing where the repeat units start and finish. So what could the monomer have been? 
We literally just need alcohol groups here and here and carboxylic acid groups here and here. Moving on to part D, so you can see I've drawn up here the uh, monomer, the two amino propanoic acid, and I've lassoed out the H and the OH, which obviously they need to come off so we can join the monomers together to make the polymer. So that means the repeat unit of this polymer is going to look like that. And then to work out the MR of the polymer that's made from 400 of these things, so we can work out the MR of this, the repeat unit, and multiply that by 400. But then what we've got to bear in mind is at the very start and the very end of the polymer chain, we're still going to have an H on there, and we're still going to have an OH on there. So to this, we need to add 18, which makes the MR of the polymer 28418. So very well done if you got that one right. And finally, part E, the synthesis question. So you'll see I've drawn up the starting material, 2-chloropropanoic acid, and we've got to turn that into this. So you can see, what do we need to do? We need to get rid of the Cl and replace it for an NH2 group. And then we need to basically turn this carboxyl group into an ester group. Okay, so starting with the substitution of the chlorine for the NH2 group, so what do we need to do is react this with an excess of ammonia, but it needs to be in ethanol. So there's the equation for that one, and I'm just specifying the ethanol condition above the arrow there. That's totally fine. And then for part two, we need to convert this into the ester group, but it's an ethyl ester group, so we need to react it with ethanol uh, in the presence of a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst, and we're going to need to heat it. So there's the equation for part two and just need to say that you could actually do that order the other way around. It doesn't have to be the way I've done it. So moving on to the calculation now, we've got to prepare 9.36 grams of compound I. So the moles of I is just it's that mass over its MR, 0.08 moles. And then to find out the moles of the two chloropropanoic acid we're going to need, we're going to divide the moles by the yield. And that scales up, and we're getting 0.125 moles. Now, all we need to do is multiply by the MR of two chloropropanoic acid to get the mass we'll need, which comes out at 13.56 grams.